Hello students, welcome back to our channel. Students, in this video, we will study a very important law from class 11 physics chapter mechanical properties of fluids. And this law is Poiseuille's law. This is a formula which is to find the rate of flow of a liquid through a tube. But first, let us understand what is the meaning of the rate of flow. Suppose we have a tube, right? And in this tube, let us say a liquid is flowing. So rate of flow simply means that the volume of the liquid which is flowing, the volume of the liquid which is flowing per unit time through this tube. Let us take two cross sections of this tube A and B, right? And let us say the difference between, the distance between these two is delta L and the liquid is flowing with velocity V. Liquid is flowing with velocity V through this tube. Okay. So rate of flow which is, <coughs> which is represented by, which is represented by capital Q. Rate of flow is the volume of the liquid flowing through this tube per unit time. Okay. So, if we say that the liquid <coughs> has taken a time delta t in flowing from A to B, right? Liquid has taken a time delta t in flowing from A to B. So, the total volume which is, total volume of the liquid which is in this part from A to B, it is A, A means the area of cross section of this part. Let us take the area of this part, area of cross section of this part as small a. So, A into, A into delta L and the time taken by liquid to go from this part to this part is delta T. So, delta L by delta T is V. Delta L by delta T is V. Which is the velocity of the liquid, right? This is nothing but distance upon time. So, this rate of flow of liquid through the tube, which is simply the volume of the liquid flowing per unit time through the tube is also equal to the area of cross section into velocity of the liquid, right? So, that is rate of flow. So, this Poiseuille's law or Poiseuille's formula or Poiseuille's equation is a formula to find the rate of flow. Obviously, we have this formula also, but this is another formula to find the rate of flow of the liquid, okay? So, what it says, now, <coughs> let us say, we have a tube and the liquid is flowing through this tube and the pressure difference between these two cross sections, the pressure difference between these two cross sections is P1 minus P2. Obviously, if the liquid is flowing from this end to this end, then the pressure at this end is more than the pressure at this end. So, P1 is more than P2. So, the pressure P1 minus P2, this pressure P1 minus P2, let us take this pressure as delta P, right? Let us take this pressure as delta P. So, Poiseuille's law says that the rate of flow Q, that is volume of the liquid flowing per unit time, right? This Q is directly proportional to P. This Q is delta P, not P, the rate of flow through any part of the tube is directly proportional to the pressure difference between the two ends of that part. So, Q is directly proportional to delta P, Q is inversely proportional to delta L. We will, we will discuss all these points. Q is inversely proportional to eta and Q is directly proportional to r to the power 4. Now, delta p, you know that that is, that is the pressure difference. Delta l is the distance between these two cross sections. Eta is what? Eta is the coefficient of viscosity. 
कोफिशियंट ऑफ कोफिशियंट ऑफ विस्कॉसिटी कोफिशियंट ऑफ विस्कॉसिटी एंड आर इज द रेडियस ऑफ ट्यूब रेडियस ऑफ ट्यूब ओके so let us analyze this formula first it says that more is the pressure difference between these two cross section more will be the rate of flow and that is very obvious if the pressure difference is more which means that pressure at p1 is much more than the pressure at p2 that's why p1 and p2 will have uh, larger value if the p1 is much greater than p2 so if the pressure difference is more then obviously the rate of flow will be more right and rate of flow is inversely proportional to delta l right if the distance between these two cross sections is more then the pressure difference uh, the rate of flow is less basically these two can be combined into a single term and we can write that q is directly proportional to delta p by delta l which is nothing but called the pressure gradient pressure pressure gradient pressure gradient when we take any physical quantity with respect to length this is what this is the change in pressure with respect to length so we use the word gradient velocity gradient velocity gradient means change in velocity with length pressure gradient is change in pressure with length temperature gradient change in temperature with respect to length so this is pressure gradient right okay so these two can be combined into a single uh, term so we can say that q is directly proportional to pressure gradient right okay q is inversely proportional to eta more is the viscosity of the liquid if the liquid is more viscous then uh, viscosity is what viscosity is simply the internal friction between the layers of the liquid so if the liquid is more viscous then there is more internal friction between the layers of the liquid so which means that it will be difficult for the liquid to flow so obviously if the coefficient of viscosity is more then the rate of flow will be less and q is directly proportional to the fourth power of the radius basically q rate of flow is directly proportional to the square of the area of cross section of the tube more is the area of the cross section obviously more liquid can be flown through the tube so if if it is directly proportional to the square of the area of cross section and area is directly proportional to the square of the radius because area is pi r square so we can say that q is directly proportional to the fourth power of the radius right okay so when we combine all these terms when we combine all these terms we can form a single formula from all these which is called the poiseuille's formula and that is q proportional to delta p divided by delta l r to the power 4 divided by eta right and when we remove the proportionality sign and put equality sign in place of this then a constant is written in the formula and in this case this constant is pi by 8 right so this is the final formula this form formula is called poiseuille's formula or poiseuille's law this one right so derivation also derivation of this formula also comes in exam but this is not the derivation this is simply just the explanation so we will derive this formula using the method of dimensional analysis i am not going to explain that method because this video is particularly for the poiseuille's law so you you must revise that method if you don't know it yet from chapter 1 units and measurements that is the method to derive a formula using the dimensions of the physical quantities which are present in the formula so let us say that this delta q depends upon a uh, power x of delta p by delta l and power y of r 
एंड पावर जेड ऑफ ईटा नो लेट एस लेट एस पुट द डायमेंशन ऑफ ऑल दीज क्वांटिटीज सो द डायमेंशन ऑफ रेट ऑफ फ्लो रेट ऑफ फ्लो इज सिंपली वॉल्यूम पर यूनिट टाइम सो दिस इज एल क्यूब बाय टी सो वी कैन राइट इट एज एल क्यूब टी माइनस वन इक्वल टू इक्वल टू के because we have removed the proportionality sign that's why put, we are putting a constant so the uh, dimensions of pressure dimension kya hai pressure ki pressure is force upon area so force force this is force this is area so it is ml minus 1 t minus 2 divided by delta l divided by this dimension of delta l is l so this l will go into the numerator so it becomes m l minus 2 t minus 2 m l minus 2 t minus 2 whole to the power x radius is nothing but length to the power y dimensions of coefficient of velocity are ml viscosity sorry ml minus 1 t minus 1 now if the base is same powers can be added so the power of m power of m is x and z so we can write m to the power x plus z l to the power minus 2x plus y minus z minus 2x plus y minus z and t to the power minus 2x minus 2x minus z right okay now let us compare these powers so if we compare these powers the power of m on this side is x plus z and power of m on this side is zero so we can say that x plus z is zero and power of t is minus 2x minus z and power of t on this side is minus 1 so if we solve these two equations so if we add right by solving we mean that we have just added these two equations so that the z cancels out so x is 1 and if i put the value of x i will get z as minus 1 now let us take the third equation which is minus 2x plus y minus z equal to uh, the power of l is 3 so now let us put 2 into minus 2 into x the value of x is 1 plus y uh y we have to calculate minus z and the value of z is minus 1 so the value of y is 4 right the value of y is 4 so if we put all these values x as 1 y as uh, y as 4 and z as minus 1 so we will finally get this Formula, right? So this is how you can derive Poiseuille's formula. And there are some assumptions that we have used for this law. Not we, but Poiseuille <laughs> had used for this law. And these are the assumptions. What are the assumptions? The flow of the liquid is steady and parallel to the axis of the tube, right? The liquid is flowing steadily in the tube, and the flow is parallel to the axis. That is the first assumption. otherwise this formula is not going to work if if the criteria is not met any of this four points is not met then uh, this formula will not work the pressure is constant over any cross section of the tube over any cross section the pressure should not change if 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 we are saying that pressure at uh, cross section a is p1 then it should remain p1 throughout it should not change right the liquid velocity is zero at the walls of the tube and increases towards the axis of the tube we have to assume that the velocity of the liquid that part of the liquid which is touching the walls of the tube is zero and as we move from walls to the center of the tube the liquid is the velocity of the liquid is increasing increasing and it is maximum at the axis and the tube is held horizontal so that gravity does not influence the flow of liquid so the tube is horizontal tube is not inclined or tube is not vertical so there is no effect of gravity on the flow of liquid inside the tube so these are some of the assumptions that poisley used for this formula so this is a very important formula in class 11th physics 
not only the derivation but numerical part is also very important on this formula right so i'll meet you in the next lecture till then all the very well.